Hi everyone and welcome to another ProBuilder tutorial. In this case we'll be taking a look at how you can optimize your ProBuilder scene to really run well even on mobile games and such. So this map here, the DM Warren map you might have seen posted around on Facebook or some other sites. I've got running all the way down to three or four frames per, uh, sorry, draw calls, um, sometimes all the way up to 10 at the most. So it's really working very well and efficiently and even have it running in the Counter-Strike portable game. So taking a look at this, if I turn the stats on up here, we'll be able to see the draw calls that it generates while we're running around in the game. And right now I have some fancy things like HDR and uh, bloom and flares going on. So the draw calls are actually bumped up by about 30. Uh, and we'll go back and look at that in a second. But just looking at the map, making it look a little bit prettier here with those extra fancy effects, you can see that it still runs at a really nice 30, I think maybe 40, uh, maybe 45 draw calls at most ever. Right now it's, you know, 30, 34, 33. It's keeping really nice and efficient. And this is something a lot of people have been wondering how to get working just right, uh, because if you don't do the optimization, you'll end up with a lot of times a draw call per each and every single uh, plane on each pro builder object. So I can easily end up with thousands of draw calls, which obviously doesn't work very well. So this tutorial will just go over how you can get your scene running just as well as this with all this semi-complex geometry, nothing crazy, but there's quite a bit going on and a couple hints and tricks to make it look better as well. So let's go back to the level and take a look at this. So just to prove for sure that it really does drop down to such few draw calls, I'm going to go in and turn off the bloom and flares, tone mapping, uh, the HDR there, and the anti-aliasing that I have turned on. Now if we go back into the level, so now draw calls two, two draw calls. You can see there's an absolute ton of batched items and it jumps up to four or five depending when it's looking around. So what's happening here is Unity will batch any item that has the same material as another. And in this case, that's pretty much everything. There are four materials total, I believe, one for the orange, blue, the gray, and then there's a red on the other side of the map here. So that leads to a max of around four uh, ma materials normally, so four draw calls. And there's a couple of other items that can affect that. Uh, but basically, that's right about where it's always going to be as long as you have everything batching. So getting that batching to work is really the key to having your level be very efficient uh, draw calls wise. So you want to make sure that you can have that happening. And the best way to do that, especially if you're making any kind of game for mobile since it's very important the best way is to light map your scene and not use dynamic lights sometimes you need to use them and you just have to and no matter what you're using each and every mesh whether pro builder or not is going to generate its own uh, special draw calls as well as if you're using you know special surface shaders and things like that so let's just take a look at the light mapping there's a couple things you can do with that to really make it more efficient than it is on its own So the light maps on this, or actually light map singular is the key to it, are a little different than you might normally see. What I've done for this map is generate one single giant light map. And the reason for this is that anytime you generate light maps uh, in Unity, it's going to normally create a couple different ones. It'll break it up into 1024 chunks, basically. And the problem there is all of your items that are under one light map are going to be batched, of course, as long as they have that same material. But then each other light map is also going to end up causing another draw call. So I could have, and I did previously, have this entire level um, light mapped completely, um, just assumed it would work perfectly. But I found that I ended up with 32 different light maps because I had a pretty high texel count and wasn't changing the light map size. And that means 32 times however many planes, and I was still ending up with at least hundreds, sometimes up to almost a thousand draw calls. And obviously that's just no good for mobile games, and even a little tricky for, um, you know, for any uh, PC game or such, if there's other things going on in the level. Still ran smooth, but was definitely a problem. So I started looking into this and realized uh, I just needed to somehow compress all the light maps down into one. 
So I ended up finding online a really handy post on Unity Answers that no one else had responded to for some reason, but it solved my problem, and I'll show that to you. So this is the page that I found, and I'll make sure and paste the link to this page in the YouTube video. But basically, this guy had the exact same question as I had. He just wanted to make the light map resolution much higher, and there's no way that I can see any way to do that. And he felt as well from the just general light map settings. So he posted up this script, or she, I guess I should say, I don't really know. Um, posted the script, which I used and found it works absolutely perfect. Once you have this in your uh, setup in your folders, just as they mentioned here, make sure you do it right in the uh, assets editor folder. Um, drop that in. And then you'll have a new menu item up top here that says light map size. And just set the size that you want your next light map to build at. I set mine all the way up to 4K, so it would just build out one gigantic light map. And that's what I did. So I have a 4096 light map here. It's actually 4096 by 2048. And after it builds it, you also need to select that light map itself and then go under um, the max size here and make sure it's bumped up to 4096. Otherwise, since it's a light, uh, light map texture type, Unity will automatically force it to be only 1024. So you want to make sure again that that's uh, bumped up to 4096 max size. Now again, what this does is make sure all of your ProBuilder items uh, or anything any really that's that's mapped into this and this will work for meshes any kind of level you're making not just pro builder uh, make sure everything is piled into that one single light map so they'll all batch down to a single draw call if they can if they all have the same material which is pretty awesome uh, just really really uh, can maximize the efficiency of your level as long as you don't uh, make that light map too large Probably if that was multiple 4096 maps, you're going to just destroy a mobile device even worse than the high draw calls would. But I've done some tests, and generally a 4096 map, one single one, will load in okay. It's going to take a while to load in on a mobile device, um, sometimes even on a PC or whatever. Um, but in the end, it would have to load in multiple ones. Otherwise, you're kind of saving, you know, swapping between them, the draw calls. It's all, you know, uh, trade-offs back and forth. But the big point is... If draw calls are your are your issue that you're really fighting, this is a way to knock them down for sure. The other thing that you'll really want to set up well in your scene is occlusion, if you want it to be nice and efficient. Uh, occlusion is great. It really works wonders to make sure the camera isn't rendering things that simply won't be seen anyway, and just makes it much more efficient. So you can set up occlusion from the occlusion tab. Just go to Window, then down to Occlusion Culling. And you can see right away, since this is on the visualize area right over here, that in my camera, it's now, or sorry, in any of the views, it's showing what it actually sees. So let's change this. You can see? Okay. And I'll make this a bit bigger as well for everyone to see. So with the occlusion on, this just, it does a little more than simply what the regular um, frustrum calling, I think it's called, does, where it just... Of course, automatically it doesn't render things that are outside of the camera view. Occlusion will also be able to figure out what can be seen through walls and such. And if it knows that it can't see through a particular wall, it won't render all the things behind it. So this saves you a ton of draw calls um, if you, again, don't have the batching going on or for whatever other reason. This is a big, big deal and obviously just saves tons. So if I move the camera around, while the, again, I have the visualization tab turned on after having baked the occlusion, you can see that it's not rendering stuff that it can't see. It's not perfect. A lot of times it will do some things it can't, but it errs on the side of uh, rendering more, which is a good thing. Otherwise, a lot of times you'll have parts of your level that seem to pop in and out and disappear when they shouldn't. Um, so it's just it errs on the, on the side of caution, I guess. And if I turn off the occlusion culling, you can see that quite a bit of items pop in and out. This is what it would see without any occlusion calling. Or this is, I mean. So it's rendering everything that it could pop that's within the within the, the camera view. So that's occlusion. It's definitely good to use. Um, as for baking it or building out the occlusion, uh, under the bake tab, you'll just want to Set these settings however they work best for you. The view cell size, uh, well, this isn't really a tutorial on occlusion, but to give you the overview of it, view cell size is 
the size of these cells you see here. And the smaller this is, the better your occlusion will end up being baked out to. So if you can make it all the way down to one, great, or possibly even smaller if you want to, but I think you're gonna run into some issues where if occlusion has to do too much work to figure out where you are and or, or really where it can see and so forth, that takes up C CPU cycles just as well as draw calls and such do. So you gotta find the right you know, compromise between the two. But a lot of times that's just a bit of, you know, tweaking the numbers and seeing what happens back and forth. Um, and it's going to be different on on different uh, platforms as well. So again, if you're you're publishing for PC or web or mobile, different amounts of occlusion and such will make uh, one will be better than the other in certain cases. So give that a try. I've also noticed that at least with a scene this large, putting the view cell size on one, uh, I actually never finished it. It took way too long uh never finished so i just said whatever I'll, I'll put it on three and go with that and it's been all right it works well i haven't looked back since so for a final build i will probably drop it down to one hit bake walk away for 10 hours or whatever ridiculous amount of time it seems to take but three works pretty well uh near clip plane and far clip plane just about the same as the camera nothing you need to worry about there the other major object is this technique up here if you put this between any one of these it does a pretty good job of explaining what each of them are right here. Um, basically, I like the middle version, PVS and dynamic objects, um, because uh, as it explains here, it's a good uh, a good balance between runtime overhead and calling efficiency. So it's not doing too much work behind the scenes to figure out what can be seen, but it's also calling quite a bit. If you set it down to the automatic portal generation, it's doing a lot in the background on the CPU. And sometimes this can be good, especially if you have a lot of dynamic items in your level, things moving around, constantly coming in and out of view, then regular uh, the, the PVS calling and such won't work anyway because it's not going to be able to, um, to figure out how to occlude those because they're dynamic. So automatic is the only option you have, and it's also going to be the most, uh, the most accurate method of calling. Also, it has a very nice... Um, I guess plus to it in that when you bake it, no matter what the cell size is, it goes very quickly. Uh, just because it's not doing as much bake baking in of the absolute static um, calling. So that's a good way to go if you just want to test it out, see what you can get real quick with some initial occlusion calling. Go with the automatic portal generation just to start and then try these other ones. The top one, PVS only, um, also as Unity already describes here, it's good for completely static levels. Not a lot of cases that you're gonna have that unless it's a single player game and there's not really a lot of NPCs or something around whatnot. But anyway, it's there, you can give it a try if you want. And that's really all I've done to make sure this scene is just as efficient as it is. So just by adding those couple things, the light map, make sure it's all down to one map or at least as few as possible, the occlusion culling, and just being careful, of course, with any kind of dynamic lights or lots and lots of different materials. Just by doing that, you can really make your scene play much, much more efficiently. So thanks for taking a look at this. Hopefully it helps everyone out with making their levels much more efficient and just post any questions if you have them. Thanks.